bless you. Hallelujah. I want today, in fact, to encourage us as uh, you'll look with me at the 134th number of Psalm. Psalm number 134. Psalm 134. It reads in this manner, Praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who minister by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. Amen. I want to talk today from this subject, moving from prayer to praise. Hallelujah. We have been in now 50 days of prayer and we're in a place after 25 days of praying, we are now saying to the Lord, thank you. I do want to encourage you, this is not the first time we have been in what we call a 50-day prayer revival. In fact, for many years we have participated. It's a part of what I believe God has given us as a church, that if we are to continue to move in the things of God, there ought to be some people who believe in prayer. You should have said amen right there. <laughs> Not only are we to believe in prayer, but oftentimes during this 50 days of prayer, we have seen God do some remarkable things. Amen. We've seen God work in a phenomenal way. Even this morning while we were celebrating at the welcome period at the 8 o'clock worship, a mother came up to me and said, my son has been sick over these last few weeks and months. But when we started the praying, he got better. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. I believe that a part of what God wants to do with every believer, no matter how long you've been saved, and that is to accomplish with us this place of developing confidence. Amen. Prayer ought to get to a place where you are able to believe, I said it, God heard me, and God will respond. Amen. Amen. I really believe that God wants the body of Christ to be in a place spiritually where we know our prayers will work. I do believe that there is a place in praying where <clears throat> we get to a place where that confidence is so ready that we start telling God thank you even though there's no manifestation of the answer. Are you hearing me today? I really believe in fact prayer is so important and as we are growing and God is grooming us in a place then there has to be a place of confidence where we are able to praise him even though it still looks bad. Amen. Do I have a witness? Yes. I think in fact that there ought to be a place where God does a stirring. It's almost like a mother who has a pot with a spoon in her hand stirring up the dough, preparing to make cornbread or even a cake it is a beating, it is a staring so that God is able to develop. In fact, the confidence of prayer is what really makes the difference. And then we've got to get to a place where we are not just asking God for some things for ourselves. A true believer can pray for some other people. Do I have a witness? I, I think it's important because... When you begin to look at what God does, in fact, he uh, explodes a place of excitement so that we're not moving in a place of doubt, but we're operating with such confidence in prayer 
that it doesn't matter who prays for us as long as we're praying for ourselves. Amen. Anybody been praying? Amen. Nurture the mindset of young and younger people to get in a place where you can start praising God early. You don't have to wait till a storm comes. If you learn to praise him now, the storm will be limited. I said, if you learn to praise him now while you're young, the storms will be limited. And then when the storm comes, because storms are coming in all of our lives. Hallelujah. Then you know what to do. So the text says, we ought to praise him who are servants of the Lord. It is this Lord's servant who are best equipped to render to him praise. He's not talking about people who are pompous. No, no. Who are arrogant in their flow. He's not talking about people who got it all together. No, no. A servant is a man or woman, child or individual who only submits themselves under God to say, thank you, God, whatever you've given me, whatever I have, you gave it to me. Come on now. Don't let me call the rope. But you ought to be praising him if you live in a house. You ought to be praising him if you have a roof over your head. You ought to be praising him if you got transportation. You ought to be praising him if you got something to eat in your refrigerator. You ought to be praising him if you got shows you to put 